This is the 2022 Sea Ray 210 Bow Rider, and today I'm going to give you a full in depth review of the boat, talk about the engine's fuel economy, how much it costs to buy the boat, and uh, finally I'll give it an overall score. Now, a few of you have been asking what we sell here. Well, we are really big dealers in used boats. We buy about 20 used boats a month. And we're also new dealers for Fairline, Williams, Parker, Sea Ray, and Kawasaki. So we live and breathe boats. Dad started selling boats in the 60s. And believe it or not, he's still about. And he still gets in the way. But he does try and help. So anyway, let's start doing the video. Okay, so we ordered this boat a year and a half ago and it's finally arrived. And we ordered it with quite a few bells and whistles, if you follow me. We've got the gray sea deck, we've got the stone upholstery, and we've got the black gel coat. And if you come around this way, you can see how pretty the boat looks with the black gel coat. We also ordered the elevation package, which means a ski tower, and uh, it's got the 4.5 litre, 250 horsepower V6 inboard fitted. There's a few things I want to point out on this boat, um, just from the outside. The first is the obviously the deep black gel coat. This is gel coat, it's not painted, it's not a wrap. Um, just attention to detail, come have a look at the cleats. They've got a sea ray on them and they're, they're properly through bolted. I love the black anodized screen and the matching tower. So that's why we've gone for black because see the black and the white all mixes. And also I really like that sea ray badge, don't you? So it looks really good. So let's jump up on board and I will show you the inside. So when um, I ordered this about a year and a half ago, uh, I've got the invoice here and I've crossed out the cost price just so any of you eagle eye viewers can't see how much money we don't make out of these boats. But I ticked quite a lot of options, which I'll go through in a minute. But on the back, I ticked submersible bathing platform and you pull this up here. And if the engine was trimmed down, have you come around here, Paul? This platform, I can't do it any further, but it kind of comes down into the water for you to swim, which is quite nice. You've also got the ski eye here, which is where you tow the weight boards and stuff. You've got the grab handle here for the ladder. Ladder's there. And you've also got the water tank there. And there's the shower, which pulls out. It's a twist and go. Look, it says twist. Twist and go. And the boat has got overall covers. Um, and that's the outdrive, just so you know. And that's the transducer. See that? That's a transducer. It's pointing the wrong way. That's how it should point. And that measures how deep you are. And that's the leg. Anyway, let's jump on board. Okay, so we're in the cockpit on the Sea Ray 210. Um, the flooring on this boat is all grey sea deck. You can have it plain. You can have it carpeted. You can have something else which looks like carpet, but it costs more money. But this, in my opinion, is the best. Now, the first thing you will notice today, Paul, is I have got some socks on which are fried egg socks. Can you see them? Fried egg socks. And I don't know why I'm wearing them. It's because I haven't worn socks for a while and you lot wanted to see stupid socks uh, because it is actually about 25 degrees today, so it's a bit hot. Anyway, enough about socks. Let's look at the dashboard. Okay, so this boat's got the nine inch Simrad screen. You can have dials, but I like this because it's very clean and uh, easy to clean, etc. What I don't like is to put the card into the Simrad screen. You've got to crawl under the dashboard, unscrew it, put it in, then screw it back in. That's a bit silly, isn't it? But anyway, that's not Sea Ray's fault, it's Simrad's fault. Maybe it's Sea Ray's fault, but maybe it's Simrad's fault. You've got the Fusion Music here. You've got your anchor lights, courtesy lights, your horn. I haven't turned the battery on, so we can't play with that. Ignition, bilge pump, bilge blower. Now, a bilge blower you use to expel air from the engine bay before you start the engine, because petrol fumes can ignite. What I prefer to do is just open the hood and check the engine and the bilge before you start. 
If you can't be bothered to do that, then turn the bilge blower on. That's how that works. You've got a stainless steel cup hold down here. Can you see that down there? You've also got a 12 volt socket here for charging your phone. Uh, we've ticked the standard stereo system on this boat, so it's quite loud enough, thank you. Uh, but you can have one with a subwoofer if you want. And here's the Mercury standard for neutral reverse with the power trim button that most people are used to. The seat, sorry, the steering wheel adjusts up and down. This is the upgraded steering wheel because we ticked some kind of pack that gave you more bits. And this seat adjusts forward and aft like this. And it also spins if you pull another lever. And I must just say, have a look at that seat with the camera there. Look at the detailing. Sea rays all stitched in here. Got a bolster here. This seat is really, really comfy. So full marks of Siri there. Also, you've got a little shelf there to put your elbow on, which I quite like too. So really, really nice driving position. Let's discuss the seating at the back. Okay, so we have got a cool box under here, which is just, you know, like you get for camping trips for your ice and beers. You've got some more storage under here, which is quite nice to have a look in there. Just a blank storage area. You've got a, uh, another one under here, which is a, like a wet locker, so you could use that to put ice in as well if you wanted. Battery master has now been moved to here. Can you see it? So it's on off. You just switch it all the way around to the bottom to on, to turn it all on. We've got another... Is there a storage there? No, there's no storage there. Maybe it's here. There it is. We've got another storage under here with a lid, which is quite nice. And then these seats here, this one, if I lift it, I think if I lift it, how does this work? Oh, they are. That goes that way to make it into a sunbed. Then you can have it, I think, in that one to make it so you can look out that way like this. And then you lift it again. Oh. And it's a normal seat pointing this way. Isn't that good? Got a little cubby hole there, another which you can lock. That's good. Um, so I reckon you could get one, two, three, four, five. I reckon you get seven adults here. So plenty of space. And you can see, even if I walk under the tower, I'm six foot one. You've got plenty of room. By the way, I did order a Bimini. And I think I've ordered a mirror as well. But I haven't put those on yet. But it looks pretty cool. So let's do the engine. Okay, so you take that seat out to get the engine and you lift this one here. And in here is a 4.5 litre Mercruiser V6. And we ticked the 250 horsepower option because that's the biggest one I could. All the service points are here, oil, oil level, power steering, etc. These are fantastic engines. They sound great. They're built beautifully. They've got really good warranties. I think the warranty is three years. Um, look in the bilge. You can see the bilge pump down there. Look. You see that? Just down there. Bilge pump down there. The blowers. These are the blowers that sucks the air out. Auto fire extinguisher. That's the water system and a cubby hole in there. If you look in there. All this, this is heat and noise reduction material really really nicely made typical sea ray very very high quality i will talk to you about how much juice this burns in a minute because i know you all want to know so let's go and look at the bow this is the forward seating area it's very comfortable these come out so you can walk through this all comes out can you see this here this all comes out but actually, if you've got some kids, they can all sit here. They can, look, you can sit here. The armrest in the right place. You've got the music. This is the stone upholstery. It all looks really nice. You've also got, obviously, the windscreen that folds back here with the clips. Um, 
you know, it's quite a nice area. Now, while we're here, Paul, I don't know if you can see, can you zoom in over there? There's a Britain's Got Talent truck trailer. Can you zoom in over there? Right over there in the distance. Can you see it? Yeah, on the screen. Now, I don't know what that's doing, but we're in the middle of rural Essex, as you can tell, and there's a Britain's Got Talent truck in the middle of a field. So I just thought it'd be interesting for you. So let's now move on to the costings. So before we go into the costings, I just want to tell you what I ticked on this boat. And look, this is the cost price of it. Look, can you see? But you can't see that, can you? Right, this has got the 4.5 MPI, uh, uh, 250 horsepower. We've got the black hull. We ticked the white bottom. We ticked the stone upholstery, which is gray. We ticked the captain's package, which is a bimini top, bow filler cushion, canvas cockpit tonneau cover. Oh, cockpit table, I didn't show you that. That's in here. If you just spin around with me here. There's the cockpit table. And it goes in that socket there. And that is part of the captain's package. And then it's got a big locker down there, but you know what the locker looks like. Um, we also ticked the elevation package, which is this black anodized ski pole. Can you see that on the screen there, Paul? Just watch your finger on that lens. Your lens on the, your fingers just, that's it. Right, elevation package, water tower, tower racks and ski mirror. I think the tower racks and ski mirror now, I haven't put them on yet. And we ticked the sea deck all over the boat, which costs quite a lot, it's about 2,000 pounds. And we ticked the, um, submersible platform which is about 1700 pounds and we ticked the digital dash with the nine inch simrad screen where you have to fumble around five to ten minutes to get the plotter cartridge in so this is quite a high spec boat and the uk price is about seventy-seven thousand pounds including that okay so here are the costings now i don't know if you can see on the screen but behind me that is my Harley Davidson. Yes, I have. I am having a midlife crisis. Yes, it is noisy. Yes, I look stupid on it. But I hope that dog doesn't wee on it. I love it and I have fun on it, all right? And it's got a big stereo and people call me all kinds of names, but I don't care. Right, F let's do it. Fuel. So if we do a speed of 20 knots, this will do 50 knots, by the way. Um, this boat will use about 30 litres per hour of petrol, unleaded petrol. If we take a fuel price of £1.70 per litre, look, I know it's cheaper some days and dearer other days, but we're going to use £1.70 today as the uh, fuel price, then this boat's going to use £51 per hour. But if you give it the full throttle, it will use up to £125 per hour but you will be going fast and you will be having lots and lots of fun. Um, average use in the UK is 50 hours a year. Now, as you might know from my last video, I've adjusted the hours used to 40 at cruise and 10 at idle because you don't go out of your berth flat out and come back flat out. You idle around and you've got speed limits, etc. So 40 hours we're doing at cruise and 10 hours at idle. The cost per year, therefore, is £2,200 per year in petrol if you do 50 miscellaneous hours. Okay, so next is financing. So this boat costs £73,000, including UK VAT. I don't think that's that bad, actually. It's not bad. It's brand new with warranties. Uh, deposit is, if you put 30% down, which is what the banks require, then that will be 21,000 pounds deposit, uh, which gives you a balance to finance of 52,000. Um, if you took a 10 year uh, marine mortgage, the payments would be about 520 pounds per month. That would give you a finance per annum of 6,240 pounds if you use finance. Obviously you can pay for it if you want, but a lot of people do finance in the UK and abroad. So six to 40. Okay, we're now gonna do very uh, fixed costs. But before we do fixed costs, there's a combine harvester. Can you get that on the video, Paul? Look, they're cutting wheat today. Today's uh, the 31st of July. 
and they're cutting the wheat. It's been very dry in England for a few weeks and luckily the wind is blowing that way so we're not going to get covered in all that because <laughs> otherwise you wouldn't be able to see a thing, would you? Um, fixed costs. Okay, this boat you can trailer, but actually um, I've put pricing in for using a dry stack. Um, the dry stack berth pricing I used was for Portsmouth, which is Trafalgar Wharf. In the UK, they will charge you £4,000 per year to dry stack this boat. So that's what we're going to use for the berth. Servicing, well, there's not a lot to service on this boat. Um, the engine and drive on a new boat, if you look after it, God, it's windy, isn't it? Um, on a new boat, won't need much maintenance. So if you allow £1,000 per year, that'll be more than enough. Maintenance of the boat, well, you can wash it yourself, you can polish it yourself. Um, it won't need a lot of maintenance in the next few years. I'm going to put £500 down, and that's just if you're being lazy and you don't want to wash it yourself. You know, if you've got someone to professionally validate it a couple of times. Um, insurance is £1,200 a year. So um, basically, your total fixed costs are £6,700 per annum. Okay, we're now onto variable costs. So the first one is depreciation. Uh, boat prices in England are still quite high. Um, you're having to wait quite a long time for new boats. So I don't think this boat will have much depreciation over the next year or two. But I think it's prudent to allow for the boat to go down a little bit. So I'm going to say £5,000, but like I say, that could, could vary a little bit. Fuel, well, we've already done that. That's £2,200 per annum. The finance, we've done that, which is 6,240. So your total variable costs are 13,440, but you might not get any depreciation. Your fuel, well, it's up to how much you use. And finance, you might not need it. So that's why it's variable, because if you didn't use it and it didn't go down and you didn't finance it, your variable costs are nil. But I put them in there just so you've got an idea of all the other costs. So now I'm going to go on to JB's scores. Okay, so I'm going to do JB's scores while on the Sun Lounger, which you can see he's got loads of room. So JB's scores, accommodation. Well, obviously it's not an overnighter, it's a day boat, but there's loads of room and it does exactly what it's supposed to. So I'm going to give it 8 out of 10. Style, we'll put a running shot on the screen now of one of these blasting through the water. Black hull, black windows, white deck, black tower you know let's be honest it does look good so i'm going to give it eight out of ten for style fun well what what's that noise what's that then mx5 uh what am i on fun fun well you can't have much more fun than playing around on a speedboat with a v6 outboard well you get v6 inboard you can you can have a v8 inboard and you can have it even more fun if you have two V8 inboards. But I'm going to give it 9 out of 10 for fun. Running costs, well, you know, I don't think it's too bad. You know, um, £51 an hour if you're doing cruising. So, and in that time you've done 20 nautical miles. So I'm going to give it 8 out of 10 for running costs. Quality, you know what I think about Sea Raid quality. It's right up there with the best of the American sports boats. And it's really, really good value as well, in my opinion, because it will last, it will hold its value, it's well made. So I'm going to give it 8 out of 10 for quality. So that gives a score of 41 out of 50, which gives a JB's measure of pleasure of 92%. No, it doesn't. It's 82%. What is that guy doing? Is he just driving around around the car park? It's 82%. <laughs> Yeah, it has got you just driven around the car park and then just cleared off. Um, 82% score for JB's measure of pleasure. Lastly, I'd like to say, as always, if you're enjoying the videos, press the subscribe button. You can press the ding a ling bell if you want. Give me a thumbs up. If you comment, I will try and personally reply to your comment. If it's a stupid comment, I'll block it. If it's a good one, I'll pin it. Thanks very much and thanks for watching. Do you want to buy this boat? Uh, not today. Not today. No. Yeah, I will, am I? Yeah, it's only 75 grand. Hold on. Is that all right? I'll tell you in a minute. 
I'll take a watch as deposit or something, whatever you want. A score. A score. Well, I'll take, take a score as deposit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Are you fine? No, I'm just doing a video on it for YouTube. Oh. Yeah. So you'll be on YouTube. Have a look later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could live wherever you want, mate. Yeah. I mean, I c it comes up with full canvas. Yeah. And what if the missus kicks you out? Don't mention the missus, not today. <laughs> All right, okay. 